Tony, if anything goes wrong in Cancun, you and I are going to be in a lot of serious trouble. Come on. I'm trying to watch my John Steiner movie here. Well, I guess we could talk. Hey, you remember that time that uh, Quentin Tarantino caught hell from Italians in 2007 after he called the state of the modern Italian cinema depressing? Okay, so clearly the Italians won't let you get away with using pejorative language about their film industry. But can anyone refute the fact that that country's cinematic output is not the global presence it once was? If you're an American, When's the last time you went down to the multiplex to watch a dubbed Italian-made Hercules film? The early 80s? Late 1950s? It's probably one of those two. In the 1980s, when something like Night of the Sharks was made, the Italians were still selling their genre cinema product internationally. But the industry had taken a major step down because of a certain technological change to everyday life. Then again, another technological development around that time allowed the industry to, I don't know, at least take another half step back up. In any case, let's take a look at... And just for fun, Let's do it through the eyes of one of the supporting cast members of Night of the Sharks. Let's pick one at random and say, um, I don't know, John Steiner. I'm Mike Malloy, and I had John Steiner in my cinema documentary, Eurocrime, and I also interviewed him for another cinema documentary, The Outsider. And here's what I know about his career. Of British birth, Steiner had been doing various manners of on-camera acting in the UK in the 1960s, but it wasn't until he did a film entitled Marat Saad, and then later took a vacation in Italy, that he realized there was an appreciation of his career in that country. And eventually he started taking offers there. Now the Spaghetti Western was on its way out as a popular genre in Italy in the late 1960s, but Steiner managed to appear in one of them, to Peppa, and he took third billing right after Orson Welles. So Italian cinema at the time, not necessarily slumming. Steiner continued acting in the various Italian genres that were being produced in the early 70s, including the Eurocrime fad, a cinematic movement of cop and gangster films patterned after American movies like uh, Dirty Harry and The Godfather. Now Steiner reached the zenith of his Italian film popularity when he played the villain role in a 1975 Italian cop film called Violent Rome. He said he was offered a king's ransom for three days work, but because he found the script so over the top, he wasn't really thrilled about appearing in it. So he said, look, double the salary and I'll do it. And to his astonishment, they doubled the already generous offer. Steiner said that after that role, he'd get stopped in the street. Everyone knew who he was. Uh, he said that his later horror films may have made up the most popular genre he was associated with, but Violent Rome was the single film that got him the most exposure. In any case, the Italian film industry was clearly in the pink. But for how long? The Italians had been big cinema goers for decades, patronizing the movies multiple times a week because they had only a couple of public TV channels. So they went to the cinema for their evening's entertainment. But then private stations like Tele Monte Carlo from Monaco started transmitting TV broadcasts into Italy and the public monopoly on Italian TV broke down. So there was just less reason to go to the movies. You could stay home and watch myriad options on television. But two things remain constant in the film world, regardless of where they're made. And that's that sex and gore sell themselves, even internationally. So it was good that Steiner got hooked up with some high-profile horror films. And it's good that he got hooked up with kinky Italian director Tinto Brass. But the cracks were beginning to show. 
Steiner played a bald assassin in Gangbuster, and he said that that was the one time in his entire career that he was not paid. Honestly, though, he didn't seem to be too burned up about it because he was just picking up a rare job that it would actually put him on screen while he had no hair. He had shaved his head for another movie, a bigger movie, he said. It was probably Caligula, which actually filmed several years prior to its release. And he just picked up the gangbuster job while waiting for his hair to grow back out. Still, it's a bummer not to get paid, and Steiner said that he could see that the Italian film industry was hurting. Things were changing. Uh, people were spending more time watching TV, spending less money on movies. He was not going to be able to get these salaries. He was not going to be able to have the lifestyle. He was not going to be able to have all these things that he was accustomed to. So in the late 1970s, he mostly retired from acting. Retired the first time, mind you. And he moved back to the UK and he had a carpentry business there. But then director Antonio Margariti called him out of retirement in the early 1980s to appear in a Vietnam War movie entitled The Last Hunter. See, several things were happening at that time, things that gave the Italian film industry a new lease on life for the 1980s. Home video offered a new revenue stream for Italian copycat movies. Vietnam movies and Indiana Jones-inspired jungle adventures were becoming popular to produce. And the Philippines, where Apocalypse Now was filmed, was a popular location for cheap jungle shooting. So Steiner spent much of his 1980s making these jungle action films for the Italians in the Philippines. Oftentimes he would play support to actors like David Warbeck or Louis Collins, both of whom, by the way, were runners-up to play James Bond. And he made Italian movies in other inexpensive countries too, like Mexico and Turkey. And 1988's Night of the Sharks was made in the Dominican Republic, from what I understand. But by the end of the 1980s, the novelty of home video was wearing off. So those sales just weren't as strong anymore. And the Philippines were, by the end of the decade, becoming more politically unstable. Steiner said when he left for the final time, there were armed soldiers all around, and it just felt good to get on that plane and leave. He had also witnessed the Philippines during the course of that decade go from being these nice little village economies selling their coconuts and their cheeses to the villagers all just migrating to Manila, uh, which he did not find to be a very nice city. Uh, so by the time Steiner left the Philippines, no major love lost. He was no longer enchanted with the little island country. Another telling moment happened in the late 1980s when Steiner's agent reported that the actor had a meeting with famous Italian director Dino Risi for a film being produced by famous Italian producer Carlo Ponti. So Steiner went down to Cinecittà, the big Italian studio, but instead of just breezing right in for a meeting with Dino Risi, whom Steiner already knew, by the way, he was told to take a number and join this giant waiting room full of actors. Turns out Steiner had not been invited for a personal interview. He had been invited for a very impersonal cattle call. Once again, the signs were there. Uh, the Italian film industry was changing. Time to get out. Furthermore, now that there was more television, Steiner said he was seeing a movie of his on television almost every night. But because of how his acting contracts were set up, he wasn't seeing a penny in residuals. Steiner used his knowledge of the film industry to transition into film sales and film financing. He had a partner for this venture in Los Angeles, and eventually she prevailed upon him to relocate there. And when that became less lucrative, again because of a changing industry, he got into buying up condos, fixing them up, and flipping them. And that led to him becoming a real estate agent. Steiner made another film for director Tinto Brass, in fact his last credited acting role at the time of this video, called Paprika. And it was another smutty film for the director. So the great John Steiner, who is basically an A-list character actor in Italy and who had appeared on screen with some of the world's biggest stars, spent his final moments in film letting a girl urinate in his mouth. Oh, and to wrap up, here's a funny anecdote he once related. In his period where he was buying and selling properties in Los Angeles, he used to attend a lot of furniture auctions. At one such auction, they were selling a TV and they wheeled it out on a cart and plugged it in to demonstrate it was in good operating condition. And what should Steiner and everyone see on that screen? Mr. John Steiner.
in one of his Italian films. I guess if you have a legendary career as a character actor, there's just no getting away from it, even if your particular industry went through a total overhaul during your tenure there. You know, I guess I could have just gotten Steiner himself for this thing, huh? Right, right, but I don't know. Presumably somebody watched it. I know that I got paid. Wait, that that's still on? <laughs>